Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Victober video. Today I am coming to you with a video that is all about Wilkie Collins. I'm going to rank all of the books of his that I have read thus far. I'm going to talk about where I think you should start your journey with Wilkie Collins. I'm going to talk a little bit about why I love his writing and some of the titles that I am excited to try by him. I have previously done a video like this for Charles Dickens, and so I have read quite a bit of Wilkie Collins and Charles Dickens, and I would have to say that they are my two favorite Victorian authors, but Wilkie Collins does come out on top for me. So Wilkie Collins is mostly known as a writer of sensation novels, which is a really interesting genre that kind of emerged in the 1860s. And I have a video all about sensation novels that I made for Victober last year, and I will link that up above and down below. Not everything that Wilkie Collins wrote is actually a sensation novel, but kind of in retrospect, many of them fall under that umbrella. So that's often what you're talking about when you're talking about a novel by Wilkie Collins. And that's really why I love Wilkie Collins and why I love his writing. I tend to think his writing is really, really compelling. And I also think that his characters are really compelling. Often that's a criticism that people actually leverage against Wilkie Collins is that his characters are just a little bit flat, that they fall in comparison to other Victorian writers. And I have always really had to wonder about that because I think the characters, and particularly the female characters, are so interesting and so well drawn. I'm always on the hunt for really interesting and dynamic female characters in Victorian literature, and they are rife in Wilkie Collins' writing. I really love how he writes women. I find it very realistic and I find it very relatable. Uh, I sometimes think there is a disconnect between me and some Victorian writers when they write women, but I often expect that. I fully expect to walk into a classic and experience uh, a little bit of sexism or just a lot of really negative things. And so I try to divorce myself from that when I go into a classic, but I see that Wilkie Collins writes women extremely well. And so I can't really cut other writers any slack because he was out here doing really great work in my opinion. Now, I am not really much of a modern mystery reader, so it really shocks me that Wilkie Collins works so well for me in a way that modern mysteries don't. I think a lot of it is setting. He sets his books in really interesting places. I'm always really compelled by the setting in his books, whether that's kind of a country manor house in the Moonstone or the Woman in White, uh, whether it's Cornwall in The Dead Secret or Frankfurt in Jezebel's Daughter. I just really think he captures the vibe of the area that he's in. I also think a lot of attention is paid to the characters, like I said. I think in modern mystery, we're often very much focused on the plot, and so character is lost a little bit. And I don't really think that Wilkie Collins ever sacrifices character to move the plot forward. There are a couple of cases where that happens, but they're kind of notable for being the only cases where that happens, in my opinion. There's also really a level of drama and over-the-topness to his writing and to his stories that I think uh, definitely would not work today. I think Wilkie Collins was setting up some of the tropes that we have become very familiar with in mystery writing. And so there's a lot about his writing today that may seem a little bit cheesy or unrealistic because they are tropes and cliches that to us are extremely overdone. But when Wilkie Collins was writing, they were probably really brand new. So I always just really enjoy coming into one of his novels because you never know what's going to happen next. And it's just so, so much fun to read him. Now, Wilkie Collins was incredibly prolific, and there are so many titles of his that have just essentially gone out of print, uh, so you really can't find a physical copy of some of his works, especially the ones that are not really designated as a sensation novel. So I have only read maybe a handful of books compared to what he actually wrote. Uh, so let's get into my ranking. Uh, so we will start at the bottom and work our way to the top from least favorite to most favorite. And I will say, every book I have read by Wilkie Collins, I have loved. Uh, so just because it's at the bottom does not mean that it's a bad book or that I wouldn't recommend it. At the bottom of the list for me is unfortunately 
the law and the lady. And I will tell you why the law and the lady is at the bottom of the list. This is a book that is about a female detective. I believe it's actually the first book to feature a woman solving the crime, if I'm not mistaken. And so there is something really, really interesting about it. And it does feel relatively groundbreaking when you're reading it. But she is a character who finds out something is going on with her husband. But I'm not gonna tell you any more than that because I made the mistake of reading the back of this book and it tells you what the main mystery of the novel is. And that is actually something when you sit down to read the book that you don't find out until you have crossed the 100 page mark. So I essentially walked into the book with about half of it spoiled for me. And I will say that is something that really affects me with somebody like Wilkie Collins. I love the characters and I love the story, but I also really love trying to figure out what's going on. And so I was robbed of that in The Law and the Lady and I think it took a lot of joy out of it for me because this is actually a book of Wilkie Collins's that I see recommended quite a lot and I see that quite a few people really enjoyed. So it's one that I would like to revisit when I'm not feeling so bitter about the fact that a lot of the mystery element was spoiled for me. But there is another book of his that I've read that also had around the first hundred pages spoiled for me. And it did not at all ruin my enjoyment of the book. Uh, so I do feel like I have to put this one down at the bottom because it did. Next up is Jezebel's Daughter. So this is a really interesting book and I really, really enjoyed it. It's just very, very short. Uh, so this is a book that is set in Frankfurt and it is about a woman that is essentially going to do anything to make sure that her daughter is happy. Uh, and so there is a really interesting mystery element here. And I will say that I think that's what's really interesting about Wilkie Collins is that 90% of his mysteries are not very straightforward murder mysteries that, oh, somebody died or somebody even went missing. There is always something very fascinating about the mystery element to his novels to me. And this was no exception. I just really wanted more from this. I wanted it to be longer. This is one where I will say to me, the characters fell a little bit flat. And again, I think that's due to its length. I don't think we spent enough time with them. Uh, and I don't think there was enough time spent in other characters. So this is actually a first person narrative, which is kind of unique. Uh, for Wilkie Collins, he often will switch points of view, which I really love. And so you often get perspectives from a wide variety of characters in some of his more popular novels. And this one, we were stuck inside a singular character's head. And I think it worked against the book, though it was a very smart choice for the mystery. We weren't really quite sure what to believe because we were only in one character's head. So this is one that is towards the bottom of the list, mainly because I just really wanted more from it. Next up was my Wilkie Collins choice for Victober this year, and that's The Dead Secret. And this was set in Cornwall, and it is all about a secret that a woman told her lady's maid on her deathbed, and years later, her daughter figures it out. And so this is one that was actually written before Wilkie Collins' heyday as the master of the sensation novel. It was written prior to The Woman in White, which was a really big breakout for him. And so this is probably the earliest novel of his that I have read, and I do think it feels like that. I think it feels a little bit unfinished and a little bit rushed compared to some of his other works, uh, which is unfortunate. But it is longer than Jezebel's Daughter, and I did really love the characters here. I also really love the atmosphere. I love Cornwall. I would love to spend any amount of time in Cornwall. It's one of my favorite places to visit fictionally. I would love to visit it really one day. Uh, I just really love Cornwall. There's something about it that really calls to me. And so the setting here was really wonderful. I could really picture things. It is like every other novel by Wilkie Collins, a book that you feel like you can't put down. So there is just a really compelling side to this that I really enjoyed. And like I said, I enjoyed all of these books, but I had to put them in a ranking and it really hurt me to do so. But uh, this is one that I am still a little bit torn on. I'm fresh off of it. So I'm going to see how my feelings settle on it right now. This is where I would put it. Next we have no Name, which is one of my favorite books of all time. All of these top four 
are some of my favorite books of all time and I just love No Name. So No Name is about a pair of sisters and they find out through various circumstances that their parents were never married. And so they are now actually illegitimate. They essentially have no name. And so they kind of set out to get their inheritance. It is absolutely fascinating. I think this work is just genuinely interesting, not only as a mystery novel, but also as a comment on Victorian society at the time and how it treated women and how it treated people born into illegitimacy. So this was really fascinating. And it also took you on a whirlwind tour of England. Uh, half of this book was set in York, which is one of my favorite cities in the world and I'm always excited to see it in fiction. You see it very, very rarely. I would love to read more books set in York. I would love to read more books set in Cornwall. But this was just phenomenal on every single page. I could not put this book down. I found it very compelling and I loved the characters. I loved the two sisters. This is a book where I would say the female characters just really shine. They are the main characters, but they really, really shine in this. And there is a side character that is absolutely hilarious and I just love. This one is hit or miss for most people. This is one of kind of Wilkie Collins' big four, and they are also my big four when thinking about Wilkie Collins. And this one is hit or miss for some people. Some people either really love the main character here, which I did, or they wish the book had followed another person. Uh, and I didn't really feel that at all, but I can see why that is something that you would feel as a reader. To me, that criticism just goes to show that Wilkie Collins does craft really compelling characters because you do want to see more of everyone in this book. And it's such a long book that that feels crazy to say that you wish it was longer, that you wish you could have spent more time in it. But this is just a really cozy read that I highly recommend. And I think it's one that you would really like if you love Charles Dickens, because I do think that it really examines society in an interesting way, in a way that some of the other works of his that I have read thus far have not. At number three is the iconic The Moonstone. Uh, the Moonstone might be Wilkie Collins' most popular novel. It might be his most famous novel at any rate. And this is about a moonstone that goes missing, that is potentially cursed. This book is so much fun. You cannot put this book down. This is one that is told in multiple perspectives, and it's almost as if a detective is talking to each individual person in the household about what happened and how the Moonstone went missing. So it feels a bit like you're getting a procedural. And thus, when you switch narrators, you start to wonder if the person that you just read was actually somebody that was trustworthy. Were they actually telling you the truth? Or is the person that you were now reading from the one who is telling you the truth? This is an absolutely perfect book. I don't wish anything about this was done better or done differently. I think this is a very tightly written mystery and it is the book of his that feels like the most straightforward mystery. It is truly a mystery or a thriller. Uh, so this is one that I also highly recommend. My second favorite Wilkie Collins novel is Armadale. Armadale is one that took me completely by storm and I just, love it with my whole heart. So this is about two men that actually have the same name and thus they really get into trouble for it because one of them is kind of being hunted down by a criminal and so it really ties their fates together that they have the same name. One of them really doesn't want to bear this name. One of them is really proud of it and so it's a really interesting and compelling look again at Victorian society and the characters here are really, really fabulous. They're really interesting. Half this book is told in letters, so there is a real element of you uncovering alongside the characters the mystery, that you are also trying to put the pieces together and read partial letters and figure out what's going on. It's just a really wonderful book. And there's also an element of you knowing more than the characters because you get to see a little bit more than they do. And so you're constantly screaming at them to wake up and look at what's happening and figure out what's going on. It's just really fun. This is a really great one. I had very low expectations for Armadale, weirdly enough. Uh, based on what people said about it and No Name, I felt like I would really love No Name, but I also felt like Armadale would probably fall quite a bit for me, but luckily that was not the case. Armadale is my second favorite Wilkie Collins. 
at number one, drum roll please, is one of my favorite books of all time. And that is the Woman in White. The Woman in White is the first Wilkie Collins book that I ever read, and it is to this date the best one I have ever read by him. This book is absolutely perfect. You will wish that this book was longer. It's crazy to say, but you will wish that you could have spent another thousand pages with these characters. The characters here are so wonderful. The villains, the main male character, the main female character in particular, amazing. Everyone is well-rounded. Everyone is so dynamic. The dynamics between the characters and how they play off of each other is just so compelling. It is really, really fascinating to see how Wilkie Collins constructed this narrative. The plot is interesting. You really want to figure out what's going on in the plot, but you also just really want to spend time with these characters. So this is kind of set at a country estate for the most part, but it kicks off when our main male character sees a woman in white wandering down the road. And so there is a real gothic nature to this. There is something very spooky and Halloween-y about this book. It's great for this time of year. It's a great pick for Victober. And you may think, gosh, that book is too big. I'm going to spend so long reading it. Trust me, you are not you are not going to be able to put this book down. Uh, so this is another that is a high recommend for me. All of these are really high recommends, but The Woman in White is just such a fabulous book. And when I read it for the first time in my first Victober, the power went out, I remember, uh, because we were having a hurricane, a hurricane was coming through. And so the power was knocked out and I read the majority of this book by candlelight and by flashlight. And there was something about that that just added to the book's atmosphere and to the aesthetic of reading The Woman in White. It just felt like the perfect way to be reading this book. And so I know the experience of reading it is also largely why I loved it. But it is a book that I think stands on its own very, very well. So of these, where do I suggest you start? As with Charles Dickens, I struggle telling you to start with The Woman in White because to me, The Woman in White is easily Wilkie Collins' best novel. And thus, if you like him, as I did, everything you read feels like a good two or three steps down from that. If you move on with him, you really try to compare everything else that he wrote to The Woman in White. And trust me, it falls short. Uh, to me, it does anyway. And so while with Charles Dickens, I struggled to tell you to start with Great Expectations, I also struggle to tell you to start with The Woman in White. But another reason that I struggle with it is that if you were only gonna read one book by these authors, shouldn't it be their best? And if that's your attitude, then absolutely, read The Woman in White. I truly think The Woman in White is Wilkie Collins' best novel. Some people will argue The Moonstone, and I can see that, but The Woman in White is just so much better to me. It's an odd thing to kind of compare and contrast two books that are five stars for me, but I think The Woman in White is his best work. And so if you are somebody who really wants to read an author's best, because it might be the only book of theirs that you pick up, pick up The Woman in White. If you were in for the long haul, with Wilkie Collins and you just have a feeling that you're really gonna love him, but you don't wanna read anything too long, I would suggest that you pick up The Law and the Lady. I really think this will work well for somebody who was not spoiled for it. Uh, so this is one that I definitely recommend as a great starting place. It's not nearly as long as The Moonstone or The Woman in White or Armadale for that matter, but I think this is one that will get you to kind of understand what Wilkie Collins is all about. And I think you'll know from this whether or not you like his writing and you like his characterization. Uh, so this is one that I also recommend you could start with. But if you want to start with a longer book, but you don't want it to be one of his big two, I recommend Armadale. I just think that Armadale is really, really fascinating. I think it is interesting for a wide variety of reasons. You're not compelled to read Armadale just because of the mystery element. There are a lot of different reasons why Armadale is a book that you keep coming back to and you keep wanting to read. Uh, so that's another one that I would suggest you start with.
Looking forward for me with Wilkie Collins, I'm so torn because I do feel like I have probably read the best that he has. Uh, and a lot of readers feel that way. A lot of readers who even love Wilkie Collins admit that he has quite a few duds. So he's never been an author that I thought I would read in full. Uh, maybe that day will come. Maybe I will get desperate enough that I'll want to read everything he ever wrote. But I do feel like in general, I've probably read uh, the ones that are gonna wind up being my favorites of his. One that I am really fascinated by is called Antonina. This was one of his first books. I think it was actually his second published. And this is a historical fiction that is set during the fall of Rome, during the fall of the Western Roman Empire. And I just think I would probably really love it. A lot of people say this is terrible uh, and it's gone out of print. I don't really know if there's a copy of it to be found anywhere or if I can even get an e-version of it. But this is one that I would really like to try. I would love to see what he does with historical fiction and I would love to see what he does with this time period in particular. Man and Wife is another that I am really excited about and I've heard this is a little bit more of a domestic novel and some people think that Wilkie Collins works very well in that realm and some people think he does not. Uh, so I'll be interested to see if I feel one way or the other there. I've always been fascinated by The Haunted Hotel, but this is one that so many people have told me is absolutely terrible that I'm not sure I will ever pick it up at this point. This is actually a short story and I believe it was published in a collection uh, with Charles Dickens at one time. So this is one I just feel torn on. I'm not really sure if I ever want to read it. The fact that it's so short, the fact that it's actually a ghost story from Wilkie Collins, oh, that makes me so excited. But so many people have told me that it is absolutely awful. So I really don't know that I would ever actually want to read it. There are plenty of books that I'm sure I still have to look forward to with Wilkie Collins. Uh, and I am really excited about having so many books left from him, but I do have the sinking feeling in my stomach that I probably read the best that he had to offer. And in general already, I felt like everything I've read by him after The Woman in White was genuinely a step down. There have been other five stars for me with him, but they are not five stars on the level of The Woman in White. And so I think I'm always gonna be chasing that. I'm always gonna be chasing that high. And I don't know that anything that he has left for me will reach those heights again. But I'm sure there's probably a hidden gem in there somewhere. So I'm really looking forward to carrying on my journey with Wilkie Collins. I would love to know down below what your favorite book by Wilkie Collins is. But that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.